Welcome to channel 69, and you have Big Hurt with the Ghetto Report. What's going on, y'all? This is Big Hurt with a special edition of the Ghetto Report. Now listen, this is a special edition here. We're going to cover the 1090 Jig incident. They wanted me to do a kill or rat segment, but I said, listen, I ain't going to do a kill or rat segment. I'm being intelligent Bruh. about this. But we are going to go over this 1090 Jig incident. It seems that 1090 Jake was in jail in 2014. Got into an altercation, him, his, his click and another click, where he got fired upon and got busted in the head with a rock and a sock. You know, I like to use the locks and the sock, but listen, the rock and the sock work just as well. But anyway, he got fired upon by another click, and what happened was he got fired upon right in front of the police, in front of the two COs. CO saw it, and him and Deborah Carnes got sent to solitary confinement. So while in solitary confinement, 1090 Jake wrote a grievance report. He said he wrote this grievance report because allegedly, Two of the people that went to the South Central confinement was being brutalized by the COs in there. They were being beaten. So he wrote this grievance in order to help them. It's according to um, 1090 J, because he's been all over the internet talking about it. But in the grievance report, he starts out saying exactly what happened. Because they filed like what they call like a DR report, and that gives an account of what happened. And the DR report allegedly came from the CO that witnessed the assault. So again, 1090 Jake was hit in the head with a rock and the sock, and another person in the fight was hit with a lock and the sock in the head. They both the same injuries to the back of their heads. So 1090 Jake said that he did write the grievance and he wrote it because he was trying to help the other people that went to the box with him. But how he started off the grievance is the contention that everybody's talking about. Because he starts off giving an account that he says comes from the directly from the DR report where he says that such and such hit him in the head with a rock and sock and, and assaulted him basically. So what 1090 Jake is saying, and I understand what he's saying. He's saying basically that because the COs witnessed the assault and they already knew what happened and they wrote in the DR report and they were all sentenced to solitary confinement, the facts of the matter was already out in the open. So I understand what you're saying, 1090 Jake. But listen, you got a reputation for outing rats. You know how these circumstances play out and how things can be perceived. So even though you wrote this prior to you doing all this, you were still in the streets, you were still part of a clique, and you were still in jail. So you, you should have known better than put anybody's name in the grievance. You know what I'm saying? You don't put nobody's name in the grievance. A grievance report in prison is primarily to point out some miscarriage that the officers or the administration does to a prisoner. You don't write a grievance on another prisoner and put a prisoner's name in it, because now it takes on a different light. It's not a grievance anymore. It's almost like a snitch report. You know what I'm saying? So when 1090 Jake put the guy's name in the grievance report, he kind of altered the facts of the grievance report. Now he's trying to justify saying they already knew the fact, but the problem that Big Hurt and us at the Ghetto Report have with that is, let's say that report would have been turned over to the district attorney's office. Because even though you commit a crime in jail and you're already in jail, that don't mean you can't be charged with another crime. And that's an assault. The man assaulted him. So let's say they would have turned that grievance report over to the, to the district attorney's office and they decided to prosecute the guy. So they come to the prison and arrest the guy for assaulting 1090 Jake. Now 1090 Jake, he can stand firm and be like, listen, I just put that in because he said he sent that to the warden. And that's that's something else too. Because when you write grievances, they're supposed to go to the grievance committee and they go through the report and they and they go through the facts of the case. You wrote that to the top chief, the top police of the jail, the warden. So he trying to grasp that straw saying, listen, I sent it to the warden. I said, but the warden, if the, if the warden can override you being in the box, then the warden is, is the chief police in the institution. So really, you send it to the warden is worse than you send it to anybody else in the prison. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Pay for the sin. You know how I do. Don't rush me. When I pay for these joints, y'all, okay. It's Big Hurt, a.k.a. Doughboy. Listen, you want to get to that bag, you want to get to that dough, Holla at Big Hurt. You know I got, I'm talking consultant. You know I got a consulting company. Or well, Jordan Hutchinson. We consult on everything. We specialists and specialize in getting to that bag. So if you want to get to that bag, holla at us, you know what I'm saying? We give you a quick consultation. We tell you what you're doing, what you're doing wrong, what you're doing right. It's always the dough. Everything is about the dough. If you want to get to the dough, holla at Big Hurt, the consulting company. Get that bread, that French bread. Big Hurt and I'm out. But anyway, let's say the district attorney would have came to jail and arrested the guy who sold the 1090J. And based on this grievance report, said, listen, we have a complainant. Because once you write this saying that somebody assaulted you, now you become a complainant. You're not just a witness, you're a complainant. The police that witnessed the seals, they're witnesses. But you were one that was assaulted, you're a complainant now. So let's say they take this grievance and they submit it to a grand jury. And a grand jury votes to say this guy assaulted you. 
Now they start to prosecute the guy. Now 1090J can be like, listen, I'm no rat. I'm not coming to try and testify. But then now they can subpoena 1090J. They can bring him to court and say, listen, you filed an accusatory instrument. If you go back on that, we can charge you with filing a false accusatory instrument. This is what the general public don't know about all this stuff here. That's why Big Hurt is breaking it down to you. So just by writing this grievance and putting this guy's name and saying that he hit you in the head, you compromise this whole situation. You know what I'm saying? So they could have came and charged the guy. Now you'd have been compelled to come to the stand and you could have played the fifth. Listen, I plead the fifth. I'm not going to testify, but it still would put homie in a bad light because they still could have read the grievance report in the evidence. You know what I'm saying? So let this be a learning lesson for everybody, all up and coming criminals and people that get arrested. You never put nobody's name in no type of report. You living by the street code. It's a street code, this thing. You got to handle this thing. The thing that Barbara's Big Hurt the worst is that 1090 Jake was facing 120 days in solitary confinement. My thing is, you didn't need to write a grievance to get out of that. Do the 120 days. That's four months. You probably be able to do that standing on your head. I'm saying, I don't know if you're flat headed or whatever, but you could have did that if your head is round. You could have did that standing on your head. Because that's what real cons do. They do six months, a year, three years, five years in a box. You putting in work, you take what goes with putting in work. You don't put in work and then two days later, listen, I need to get out of this because I was the victim, really. You don't do all that crime. If you put in work, you put in work and you face the consequences. So that's what this little learning lesson for the public and for 1090J. I hope that you learn from this here. So if you ever get caught in another situation, call the grievances, forget all that stuff here, do your time like a man. Forget trying to get out early, you just do a stand on your head. If somebody asks you what happened, you don't know what happened. Like, you know, the age-old adage that we say, I slipped and fell. I don't care if I got 19 knife wounds in my back, I slipped and fell. That's the only statement you should have gave, I slipped and fell. If they weren't gonna let you out behind that, then you need to stay where you was at. You know what I'm saying? This is a Big Herbert's Ghetto Report. I hope this has been educational, this has been an educational Ghetto Report. And the Big Herbert, I'm out, man.